In this practical, we're going to investigate a variable that affects the temperature change of a reaction that takes place in solution. And the reaction that we're going to look at is between zinc metal and copper sulfate solution. Now, a variable is just something that we can change that may or may not have an effect on the temperature change of this reaction. Now, this reaction is exothermic, so it releases heat energy as it proceeds, and that heat energy will cause the temperature of the solution to rise. Now, if I want to investigate one variable that affects this temperature rise, I need to consider all of the variables that could affect the temperature rise. And there are quite a few of them. For instance, the volume of copper sulfate solution that we use and the concentration of the copper sulfate solution will have an impact on the temperature change of this reaction. Likewise, the mass of zinc that we use and the surface area of the zinc powder that we use will affect the temperature change. So for instance, I could have powder or I could have small granules of zinc and that changes the surface area and that may affect the temperature change of the reaction. I'm going to investigate the effect of the mass of zinc I use on the temperature change of the reaction. So that's my independent variable, the variable that I'm going to change in order to investigate its effect. I'm going to measure the temperature change of the reaction mixture. So I need to record the initial or starting temperature before I've added the zinc and then the final maximum temperature that the solution reaches after I've added the zinc and stirred the mixture thoroughly. That is my dependent variable, the variable that I'm measuring because it changes as a result of me changing my independent variable. Now, all the other variables that I listed a moment ago, they must be kept the same. They are my control variables. If I don't keep them the same, they will also have an effect on the temperature rise. And I only want the temperature to change because I've changed one variable, my mass of zinc. If I control my variables well by measuring them, then I should be able to repeat the ex one experiment over and over again and get the same result each time. So, in this investigation, I'm going to use 30 centimetres cubed of one mole per decimeter cubed copper sulfate solution. Now, one mole per decimeter cubed is just a measure of the concentration of the solution. Chemists measure amounts in moles and we measure volumes in decimeters cubed, which is just a thousand centimeters cubed. So one mole per decimeter cubed is just a measure of one mole, one amount of copper sulfate in one decimeter cubed of solution. So it's just a measure of concentration. So I'm going to pour my pre-measured 30 centimetres cubed into my polystyrene cup. And why am I using a polystyrene cup? Well, if the reaction releases heat energy, then I want to try and trap that heat energy in my solution so I can measure the temperature rise accurately. And polystyrene's quite a good insulator. Now, I need to measure the initial temperature of the solution and it's always good to stir a, a solution before you take its temperature just to make sure that, any, that there aren't any sort of pockets of heat that need to be spread out before you take the temperature. So I've got a reading of 17.0 degrees C. Now I've pre-weighed a couple of masses of zinc. I've got 0.5 grams and I've got 1.0 grams. So I'm going to add my 0.5 grams first, stir the reaction mixture thoroughly and look for that maximum rise of temperature. Now be careful not to stab the thermometer through the base of the polystyrene cup as you do this. It does happen a lot in class and it kind of ruins the experiment. Okay, so my temperature's gone up to 22, but it's still rising. So I'm going to keep stirring and carefully watch for that maximum temperature rise. Okay, it's now at 23.5. 
26 and still rising, so I need to keep stirring. Remember, we're looking for the maximum temperature rise. It's now at 27. it looks like it stopped at 28.5 degrees. So I'd record that as my maximum temperature rise. I will have already recorded my initial temperature and I can work out the temperature change by the difference between those two temperatures. Now, I need to repeat that exact same experiment, controlling the variables of concentration and volume of copper sulfate solution, but using a different mass of zinc powder. Now, ideally, I'd do it at least four or five different masses so I can see with confidence how the mass of my zinc affects the temperature change of the reaction. So I'm going to repeat the experiment in exactly the same way but change my independent variable, my mass of zinc. Now I've got, I have got exactly 30 centimetres cubed of copper sulphate again here but it's at a different level because these two measuring cylinders have different, slightly different shapes uh, and different widths, so 30 centimetres looks different in each measuring cylinder, but I am controlling that variable carefully. So in that goes. I need to measure the initial temperature of that solution again. And that is reading 18.5 degrees. And I've got a pre-weighed 1.0 grams of zinc powder that I'm now going to add and again stir thoroughly and watch for that maximum temperature rise. Okay, the temperature is already up at 29 degrees and it's rising. It's now at 35 degrees and still rising. And it's at 40 and it's slowing down but it's still going up. Okay, and it's reached 42.5 degrees and it's stopped there. I'll just give one more stir just to double check. Yeah, so my maximum final temperature is 42.5 degrees C, so I'd record that as well. And we can see from those two results that clearly the mass of the zinc does affect the temperature rise of this reaction. With half a gram, we got a much smaller temperature increase than with one gram of zinc metal. But to be more confident of the relationship between the mass of the zinc and the temperature rise of the reaction, I'd need to do at least three or four more other masses, so maybe 1.5 grams, 2.0 grams and so on, and then I could plot mass of zinc against the temperature rise of the solution to see more clearly how the mass of the zinc affects the temperature rise. Now, I could investigate any of the other variables to see how they affect the temperature rise by doing exactly the same thing. Pick one variable and make that my independent variable and change it. Measure the temperature rise as my dependent variable, but keep all of the other possible variables the same, i.e. make them my control variables. And that's how we investigate a variable that affects the temperature rise of a reaction that takes place in solution.